Tired of ads barging into your favorite news podcasts? Good news. Ad-free listening on Amazon Music is included with your Prime membership. Just head to amazon.com slash ad-free news podcasts to catch up on the latest episodes without the ads. Enjoy thousands of ACAST shows ad-free for Prime subscribers. Some shows may have ads. On today's Smart 7, the Bank of England cranks up rates again. Donald gets indicted again and lots more. It's Friday, 4th of August. It's chocolate chip cookie day. And happy birthday, Barack Obama. The Smart 7. It's news, but not the news. The UK's economy is continuing to struggle and with inflation stuck at almost 8%, Thursday saw yet another interest rate rise from the Bank of England. Rates were increased by a quarter point, taking them to 5.25% and marking the 14th consecutive increase. It's more bad news for mortgage holders, but Bank of England Governor Andrew Bailey did at least have some good news on food inflation. Price inflation for food and non-alcoholic beverages has been very high, but it does appear to have peaked. So we do expect that food price inflation will come down gradually over the rest of this year. With energy prices also starting to fall, there is some hope inflation will begin to drop substantially. But former member of the Bank of England's Monetary Policy Committee, Martin Wheel, says we may not be finished with rate rises just yet. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a further increase, but I think the committee will say the decision is data dependent and the data that many of the members will focus on are the data on wage growth. Labour's Shadow Business Secretary Jonathan Reynolds says it's time the government dealt with the key issues. The job of the government, the job of any government right now, should be to ask why is the UK such an outlier now when it comes to this very high rate of inflation. And the job of the government is to make sure we are minimising those inflationary pressures and learning lessons from the crisis that we have just been through. Thursday was the first day of the UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak's holidays. He's gone to California, but things didn't go well in his absence. Firstly, Deputy PM Oliver Dowden got himself dressed up in a high-vis jacket and wandered straight into the middle of a row over the migrant barge, Bibby Stockholm, that's now docked in Dorset. He was asked why the government didn't anticipate the fire and health and safety issues with the vessel, and he managed to insinuate on Radio 4 that the problems were at least in part caused by woke Guardian reading firefighters. I would just gently say the the fire brigades union has donated eight hundred and fifty thousand pounds to the labor party since 2010 is affiliated to the labor party and i'm afraid what we see with this is exactly what we saw uh, with trying to pass the legislation not to be outdone greenpeace decided to pop into rishi's empty house and launch a massive protest by covering the whole thing in a giant black bedsheet campaigner Eamon mccarthy was defending the unorthodox protest over north sea drilling licenses on sky news this one is on him It's his decisions that are leading this country and he's absolutely putting us all at risk by deciding to go after more fossil fuels when the world needs to urgently be transitioning away from them. Donald Trump was back in court on Thursday collecting another loyalty stamp on his indictment card. In fact, as he flew from his New Jersey golf club to Washington, he posted on Truth Social he was hoping for a fourth indictment to secure the Republican nomination. His former Attorney General Bill Barr told CNN he's 100% sure Trump knows he lost the election in 2020 and that special counsel Jack Smith has plenty more up his sleeve. We're only seeing a tip of the iceberg on this. You think Jack Smith has more? Oh, yes. I'm, I would believe he has a lot more. And I think they have a lot more evidence as to the, uh, President Trump's state of mind. Trump pleaded not guilty to all four charges. Uh, former Republican Congressman Joe Walsh says he thinks Trump is already on his way to becoming a martyr with his MAGA base. It's not a political party anymore. The Republican Party is a cult. He's the cult leader. He said it himself, right? He said, I could murder somebody on the streets of New York City and they'd still support me. He's right.
The European Union has been attempting to build pressure on Moscow to revive the Black Sea grain deal. EU foreign policy chief Josip Borrell has written to G20 members urging them to speak with a clear voice and help those most in need. But despite international pleas and an appeal from the Pope, there's been no sign of progress. Lithuanian Defence Minister Arvida Anusauskas probably won't have improved the mood in Moscow either, as he spoke to German television to say he thinks Russia's military is on the decline. If you compare it to NATO's arm forces and capabilities, it is no longer the second biggest army in the world. The second army will now be the Ukrainian army. Tired of ads barging into your favorite news podcasts? Good news. Ad-free listening on Amazon Music is included with your Prime membership. Just head to amazon.com slash ad-free news podcast to catch up on the latest episodes without the ads. Enjoy thousands of ACAST shows ad-free for Prime subscribers. Some shows may have ads. Welcome back. The final group games at the Women's World Cup wrapped up on Thursday and once again there was epic drama. This time former champions Germany crashed out, held to a one or draw by South Korea. Meanwhile Morocco, who had lost their opening game to the Germans 6-0 and are ranked 72nd in the world, managed the impossible to beat Colombia, putting themselves in the running for the last 16. That led to incredibly tense scenes as the Moroccan team, coach and fans all waited for the final score in the Germany-South Korea game. It's finished in Brisbane. Morocco are through to the last 16 and just wait until the news gets through to those players. They are about to find out that they have done the job. Look at that. Just look at that. Succession may be over, but Shiv Roy still has a place in all our hearts. And Shiv, or as she's also known, Australian actress Sarah Snook, is this month's Variety cover star in an interview filmed pre-actor strike. She immediately answered the question on everyone's mind. What is wrong with Roman Roy? A lot. And she spilled the tea on the hardest part for her and co-star Matthew McFadden, one an Aussie, the other a Brit, when it came to pretending to be an American, or acting, as we used to call it. In terms of words that I found difficult to say, Matthew and I would always find New York really difficult <laughs> because it's New York. It's New York. New York. New York. Because there's too much of an R. Uh, yeah. New York. This year could be a weird one for the Oscars with no writers and no actors, but it could also be a clear run for the likes of, well, Barbie and more probably Oppenheimer. One film that definitely won't be troubling the Oscar voters is today's hot new release. It's called, in what may be one of Hollywood's worst ever puns, Slother House. And as you may have guessed, it's a horror movie about a murderous sloth. I'm not kidding and I apologise. It hits cinemas on the 30th of August. In the jungle, she's a beta, but out here... She's an alpha. Alpha! It is a wild animal. You don't even know what it eats. Alpha? This is Slother House. Oh. You've been listening to The Smart 7. We'll be back tomorrow at 7 a.m. Hit that follow button and have a great day. Give us seven minutes and we'll give you the world. Tired of ads barging into your favorite news podcasts? Good news. Ad-free listening on Amazon Music is included with your Prime membership. Just head to amazon.com slash ad-free news podcasts to catch up on the latest episodes without the ads. Enjoy thousands of ACAST shows ad-free for Prime subscribers. Some shows may have ads.